Hello and welcome to the program. I'm your host, Neil Howard, here on Health Professional Radio. What is hyperkalemia and why are patients with kidney disease often at risk of developing it? Our guest in studio today is Dr. Joseph Vassilotti, and he's with us today to talk about a new survey of people with chronic kidney disease as the uh, Chief Medical Officer of the National Kidney Foundation. Welcome to Health Professional Radio, Dr. Vassilotti. Great. Thank you for having me. Before we get into topic, Give our listeners a little bit of background about yourself being the chief medical officer there at the National Kidney Foundation. Uh, So I'm a nephrologist, and I'm also on the clinical faculty at Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai, and I'm an associate professor there where um, where I see patients as well. We train nephrology fellows there. Those are residents who are going into nephrology. This new study, uh, this survey of uh, people that are suffering with chronic kidney disease, uh, what was the purpose uh, of the study in the first place? Well, hyperkalemia, as the audience knows, is an important complication of chronic kidney disease. And the purpose of the study was to have an understanding about the awareness of chronic uh, kidney disease, hyperkalemia, in patients with chronic kidney disease and the full spectrum of disease, Uh, patients who are treated with dialysis, patients who have a kidney transplant, and patients with much earlier stages of kidney disease. In fact, Patients with all the stages of kidney disease were included um, in this survey. And then moreover, what do patients understand uh, potassium means in the blood? Do patients know their potassium uh, level in, the, in their blood? And, and, um, and do they know about how hyperkalemia can be treated? So in your opinion, it's, it's a lack of awareness that is contributing to this hyperkalemia, people not knowing exactly what they need to do about it. Is, that, is it just a lack of awareness? It's not surprising that hyperkalemia has low awareness because chronic kidney disease itself has low awareness. And only about 10% of people in the U.S. who have chronic kidney disease are aware of the condition. So it uh, unfortunately makes sense that uh, awareness of a complication is low. Um, But I I think we can start to change the dynamic a little bit, and we can start to help um, prevent hyperkalemia and help patients better understand what it means and better manage it when they have it. And I think that um, the opportunity for the practicing clinician is to think about the the patient who might develop hyperkalemia in advance. In my opinion, um, most patients only learn about hyperkalemia because doctors and, and other healthcare professionals start to talk about it once they have an elevated potassium level in the blood. So um, I think by increasing awareness for patients of uh, hyperkalemia, we can start to move those conversations up. So what are some of the, uh, the symptoms of hyperkalemia? And once those symptoms have been identified by either the patient or the practitioner, how, you know, how is it actually properly diagnosed? Unfortunately, hyperkalemia is often asymptomatic, so patients uh-huh. uh, may feel well. And the first uh, problem they have with it is, uh, uh, could be quite severe, could be a heart rhythm problem if, it's, uh, if the hyperkalemia is severe. So I think that's important, and that's why uh, it's very important to have your blood monitored for potassium if you have chronic kidney disease uh, to detect uh, hyperkalemia. In my days, I've seen some patients with extremely elevated potassiums, and sometimes patients also have um, muscle weakness uh, that goes along with hyperkalemia because the potassium affects conduction in the, in the heart. It can also affect um, skeletal muscle. Um, contraction. So for that reason, I think that's why patients um, experience that. I, I think the, the most important thing for people to know, though, is that uh, they may be completely symptom-free uh, with a, a high potassium level. Well, that's, uh, that's extremely problematic in the first place, being asymptomatic. But you mentioned managing the, uh, the condition once it's been uh, diagnosed. What are some of the challenges, um, other than you know the, the high levels of potassium and the things that go along with it, that would uh, prevent someone from managing their uh, potassium levels effectively? Well, I think uh, that uh, the, by far the most important risk for hyperkalemia is impaired kidney function. So patients should know that just because they have kidney function, um, they're at risk for hyperkalemia. The um, other thing that patients uh, should know is that 
unfortunately, a lot of the medicines that are used to treat chronic kidney disease can raise the potassium level, um, such as ACE inhibitors or angiotensin receptor blockers that we use for treating hypertension and albuminuria or proteinuria. You know, those drugs reduce the risk of kidney failure. They reduce the risk of mortality. So they're really important drugs for us to use. Um, but unfortunately, they have um, the risk of hyperkalemia. And I think one thing um, for clinicians to do is to think about what the potassium level is before they start those uh, therapies. And then there are certain kinds of diuretics, the um, potassium-sparing diuretics like sarnolactone and aplerinone that um, also increase potassium that are sometimes used for patients who also have heart failure or who have um, liver disease. And uh, those also can raise the potassium. For the individual patient, they're, it's really complicated. There's a, there are diet issues that patients have to deal with. Unfortunately, diet is very challenging um, for patients with hyperkalemia. A lot of the foods patients like to eat are high in potassium, uh, the fruits and the vegetables. I use the ABCT approach very simply, you know, avocados, bananas, citrus fruits, uh, juices and tomatoes and tomato products. Um, you can learn more about the diet. Uh, if you look at the MKF website, there's a very nice description of that. Also, it's important to tell people what they can eat. You know, in general, apples and berries are relatively low in potassium, and you may want to have a dietitian involved to help patients um, navigate the, low, the potassium restricted diet. The other aspect is that potassium is uh, often beneficial for people for, with blood pressure that's elevated and that's unfortunately it's something that we have to deal with with our kidney disease patients that we have to restrict it. Um, I just did discuss the um, kidney protective medications and then there may be other medications that we can use uh, that uh, reduce potassium like diuretics, uh, the thiazide diuretics or the loop diuretics. Sometimes if the patient has metabolic alkalosis, we can treat that with alkali, and then uh, there may be other therapies, potassium binders that uh, can be used uh, to treat the potassium in the blood. Now, where can we go and get some more information online about the survey and also about hyperkalemia? The uh, National Kidney Foundation website is www.kidney.org. Uh, that has a lot of information. There's a potassium and your CKD diet in the A to Z Health Guide. Uh, that is uh, very useful uh, for both patients and uh, clinicians to uh, refer their patients to. Uh, there is the survey is available there. In addition, there's a CME for uh, healthcare professionals uh, regarding um, CKD and hyperkalemia approaches um, to uh, diagnosis and management. Well, I appreciate you coming in today, Dr. Vasilati, and I'm hoping that you'll come back with us in future segments and give us some updates. Okay, great. Thank you for having us, and uh, thank you for uh, discussing this very important topic. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Transcripts and audio of the program are available at hpr.fm. You can subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, listen in, and download at SoundCloud, and be sure and visit our affiliates page at healthprofessionalradio.com.au and also at hpr.fm.